Good day, guys, and welcome to another Daily Shave. I'm Eric Neria. I'm happy to be with you today. Today, I'm going to be doing an extra special shave because it's a scent that I am absolutely in love with, and this is going to be Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Oubliette. Um, as I'm loading the brush, I'll give you a little bit of history on this scent and its release and its availability. I'm going to go ahead and start to load my soap, which is actually blooming as we speak. I'll dump the bloom water there. For today's brush, I'm going to be using a brush I haven't used in a while, but I actually love it. This is the Samog 2000. So Samog makes some of the best board brushes available. This one has an extra high loft, much bigger knot. Same type of hairs that you come to expect from Samog. These are actually hand tied. Um, they're actually handmade in Portugal by a small shop, or it's a workshop rather, from a small family. Um, so it's a very small operation, but very, very big reputation and very, very big performance. And so I love some oak brushes, and this is one I haven't used in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and start loading the soap. So this soap is really great. So just to give you a little bit of history on it, um, PAA, which Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, they typically do seasonal releases. And during Christmas time, they've become very popular for a scent called Cane, C-A-N-E. And Cane is basically a peppermint barbershop scent. It's absolutely amazing. So they release that scent like they always do. But what they actually did on top of that is about two weeks after the release of Cane, which typically comes out around beginning to mid-November, right around December, they announced that they were going to be coming out with another Christmas scent called Oubliette. And nobody knew what that meant, but it was actually birthed out of the How to Grow a Mustache Forum on G+. And the result is one of my favorite scents that PAA has to offer right now. So what I'm happy about is it was traditionally supposed to be a seasonal release, an extra special thing from that group, but now it's part of the traditional PAA line. So you saw the logo on the splash that I held up. That's the original How to Grow a Mustache logo. So before PAA merged with Pedal Pusher Fancies, uh, Douglas's operation was known as How to Grow a Mustache. And that's basically how he released soaps. And then he was Synergy. That was the name of his uh, soap formula, I believe. And so now it's Phoenix Artisan and Accoutrements with the Crown King formula. But that's a little bit of history on that. So the G Plus group is actually called How to Grow a Mustache. And so they still use that old logo from the How to Grow a Mustache days. And so when you look at it, if you go to the West Coast Shaving site or go into the store, you'll see it has that traditional logo, which is the, uh, the gentleman with the uh, traditional mustache and the uh, eyeglass uh, magnifier and those kinds of things. So it's pretty cool. So I like it, I love the nostalgia of it. The scent is just out of this world, I love it. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. So you can see I'm loaded pretty well there. I'm gonna go ahead and wet the face. Delve right into this. Alrighty. These days, interesting when I'm looking at my brush collection. Go stray there. I'm into bigger lofts and bigger knots. And so this is actually one of the bigger offerings that Samog does make available. that on there in its pasty form and start to load it. Now this scent, Oubliette, was released in the Crown King formula. And then it was released shortly after that, if my uh, chronology is correct. Shortly after that, it was announced that PAA would be going entirely to the Crown King formula. Which seemed to be the fan favorite. I like them both. But again, that's just me. But if I had a preference, I probably would go with the Crown King formula. I would have selected it. It's just great for a vegan formula. It's, uh, it's just got a really nice texture to it. It's easy to lather. I mean, it explodes the minute that you put hydration to the puck. Really easy to work with. It's voluminous, it's slick. The scent protrudes, it doesn't get lost in the formula. Good stuff.
it's coming along. So the scent on this, as far as profile goes, I couldn't even begin to tell you what it is. Now I have heard, uh, and I've smelled this scent, but it's been probably two years, two and a half years since I have smelled it. I've heard that it's drawn correlations to and resemblances to the High Jump 47 scent. Um, it's a very cologne type scent. It's got a, a very earthy type quality to it too. Not really a sandalwood or an oud, but I would call it more of a, I don't know, like a fragrant vetiver maybe. There's something earthy about it, but there's a real natural goodness to it. And this is one of those soaps that um, it's a mystery, it's an enigma to me on what's actually in it. I can't smell one particular thing and say, oh yeah, it smells like that. You know, when I smell sandalwood, when I smell vetiver, when I smell citrus, when I smell cologne, when I smell, um, you know, oud, all the different types of ingredients in, in, you know, that basically make up a fragrance. Oftentimes we can identify them. This one, no clue. And I'm sure somewhere, uh, PAA is pretty good. And I think West Coast Shaving does it on their site too. They'll actually give you a description of the scent, which is really nice. So PAA, uh, they get very creative with their scents. I've always called Douglas a master perfumer. But this scent, uh, not knowing what it was, came out the end of 2017, going into 18. Uh, I just heard the name. I heard it was a release. I hesitated on it. I ended up picking it up. And I'm so glad I did. In the instant that I smelled it, I, I fell in love. It rose into my top three scents that they have to offer. First time I smelled it was literally less than a year ago. So if you've not tried Oubliette, it was really awesome. Uh, I was in West Coast Shaving again last Friday. I was in town and uh, they had two or three tubs of it on the table there. So I was super stoked to see it at the table, at the store, when I wanted to just drive in and pick it up. But it's also available on the site. So if you don't own it yet, do yourself a favor and pick it up. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this. Man, this fragrance is terrific. And then you couple it with a splash, oh my goodness, you're off in your own wet shaving world. It's just one of those scents that's just, it's very pronounced, it's very bold, but it's very good. And that's the other thing. I've also smelled scents that are very pronounced, very bold, and very bad. And so you don't want that trifecta, you want the other trifecta. A little bit more water. This is a boar brush, and so it's animal hair. And lately, especially the last like six months, I've really, really, really been devoted to synthetic brushes. I love them, they're easy to work with. But when I do use animal hair, I forget how much I love it, especially boar. Badger's a little more finicky for me, but boar is terrific. And so as you can see, before I went into this, uh, pillowy goodness here. I had a substantial amount of growth. I haven't shaved, I think, since Sunday. And it is now Wednesday. Or maybe it was Saturday I shaved. I can't even remember. It's been a while. I had three back-to-back -back trips. Um, I shaved the day that I came home, and I don't know if I've shaved since then. Maybe I have. But what I found works good for me, too, is when I get a nice lather going, too, is not to keep swirling it all the time. I'll swirl it and get it in between the follicles, get it in between the hairs. But the last two or three applications of water, I just kind of paint them in and it really does a good job. It makes it less messy. I have a tendency to get messy. And so it works really well. But man, a crown king, the formula itself, I love the way the lather comes together. The composition is just amazing. You're gonna love it. All right. Try to get lather out of my nose. So for razor today, I'm going to be going with, this is the PAA injector. It's a replica, it's new. 
It's a replica of the sh uh, traditional Schick injector. First time I'm ever using it, period. I've never used a Schick injector. I've only ever had this version. Just got my blades in when I was out of town. Got my razor in right before I left for out of town. And I'm excited to use it. So first go with the Schick injector. Uh, this could be bad, we'll see. Oh, that's nice. So just like gem blades, injector blades are, you gotta search for them. <laughs> you gotta search for them. But they are available. But this is really, really smooth. So what I did to, oh, this thing is great. coming off nice and easy. The soap's providing everything I needed to provide for me. This is a nice shave. I find the longer I go, the more comfortable of a shave I'll get. And I think that is, it's because, you know, shaving is facial abrasion. I do do it daily, usually, especially during work weeks. But I was doing a lot more virtual work from my home office this week because I had a lot of catching up to do. It was gone nearly three weeks. And uh, so I just haven't shaved. I'd, you know, get up, take a shower, and just go downstairs and work. But I find it's just very therapeutic when I have a lot of growth. But when you have a lot of growth, depending on the type of beard that you have, there is some preparation that you do have to do. And for me, my beard is thick, but it's not very coarse. And so as long as I get the lather in between the follicles, like you saw me do in the very beginning, the results are pretty good. But there are some guys that have very wiry beards, very coarse beards, and you may have to really soak your beard if you've got long hair, which is one way to prepare. Some guys will use a pre-shave some guys will use a lot of the residual lather to really kind of soak it into the beard, depending on how long the hair is. But for me and my beard, As long as I get the lather in between the follicles, as long as I get good moisture going on my face, I'm usually in good shape. So my hair grows fast, and like I said, it is thick, but it's not very coarse, and so it makes for a good experience for me. You know, if you're new to wet shaving, here's one thing I would say. This bottom lip part, I see a lot of shavers doing it, including myself now, where we're just whipping around there really fast. And when I was a new shaver, I used to do that. And after you catch your lip once or twice, you'll actually learn that it's an area you need to be very sensitive. You need to really watch what you're doing. So anytime you're wet shaving, because we are dealing with uh, very sharp blades, we're dealing with a, a more aggressive style of raising than traditional cartridges. And I wouldn't even call it traditional cartridges traditional. But because of that, we do have to be careful. But I can tell you that catching your lip is no fun. This lather, there's a couple of companies out there that I prefer, but the way that Crown Kings lather comes together. It's composition, it's texture. It's one of my favorites, especially looking at it come out of the tub. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. The way it goes on your face is great. 
this is my second application. This razor is performing so well, the soap is performing well, I might be able to get away with three very quick passes, which is what I'm aiming for here. Okay, cross green. Man, that is some slick soap. And that's really what I'm looking for. The cushion and glide on this are tremendous. And the fragrance is insanely good. Have I said that already? If you live near West Coast Shaving, pop into the store and smell it. They may even offer it in samples, I don't know. Maybe West Coast will comment on the video. I did see it at the store, but it is available on the website. But even if you purchase it blindly, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. This razor is super easy to use and ultra efficient. And here's the other thing. I have a bump here. When I don't shave, or I said one of my previous videos, I actually get bumps. I have a bump here and I have a bump here. The razor hasn't clipped it. And a lot of that has to do not only with the design of the razor, but most of it has to do with the glide and the components of the soap that are protecting me. And so, really good stuff. For the amount of growth I had, there even as it's going against the hair, no tug and pull. That part right there, I always lightly go over. And the reason I do that is because I have hairs that come out right here and right here and they grow at an angle and I've got to get there a little more difficult. So what I hope doesn't happen is that I make a fool of myself and get those bumps in these uh, final subsequent passes here. If it does, you can laugh at me in the comments. Now, I technically got this soap at the end of 2017, but it is going in my best of 2018 video. And I'm super stoked that you can pick it up at West Coast Shaving. Because when I run out, I'm getting another one. This brush is fantastic too. This is again, the Samoog 2000. Much larger knot, but still has those very soft tips that Samoog gives you. Finest boar hairs that are available. You'll love it too. The wood handle's great. I mean, the design on this is pretty spectacular. All right. Down to the wire. I got the bump. Didn't even feel it either. That's how smooth it was. But be sure to laugh at me in the comments. It's okay, I've got Ellen.
Mustache area is my most sensitive. I have to be most careful, but the soap is providing very, very good slickness. This is my final cleanup pass. I'm gonna take what's left out of the brush. When you do that, and I learned that from another shaver years ago, but when you decide to yank on the knot of a brush, I use the ter uh, term yank very usefully. Um, when you decide to do that, don't apply pressure just enough to kind of get the lather out of the brush, but you don't want to squeeze it and yank it. You do risk the chance of pulling the knot out of the actual handle. I've not seen that happen yet, but it might be one of those uh, old legends, like, you know, if you sit too close to the TV, your eyes are gonna get crossed, that kind of thing. But I imagine it can happen to older brushes that maybe have knots that have been sitting in the handle for years. It maybe depends on the type of, uh, adhesive they used, but I would just caution it. I try to be careful. And sometimes I end up doing the thing I say not to do. So this is just a cleanup pass. much quicker than my other subsequent passes. This is where I just go and get the areas where I know that hair goes in a certain way and I have to do these two particular strokes to get those hairs. That darn bump. At the beginning of this, I really thought it was gonna be a blood-free zone. This is a great soap. I mean, the slickness on this. Two areas where PAA really shines. Actually three, scent, slickness, and cushion. And I think if you ask any shaver what they're looking for in a soap, those are the responses they're gonna give you. I've not yet heard a shaver say, I don't really care about slickness, or I don't really care about cushion, or I don't really care about scent. Although there are scentless soaps. So again, you saw how I did my cleanup pass, but that's just the way that my facial, facial contours are. That's the way that my hair follicles grow in. And so for you, you wanna map your own face and figure out what that cleanup pass looks for you, or looks like rather. That was a great shave. So before I apply my splash, I'm gonna clean up. I got a few little nicks there that I'm gonna clean up with the Allen block really quick. So here's what's really neat about this shave. When I applied the actual alum stick to my face, I had a couple of tiny nicks here and then the bump here. The only one that stung was the bump. And when it doesn't sting, that's an indicator of how well your shave went. And so you didn't, that means that there's no facial irritation. Uh, the cuts are probably just surface cuts. 
And so the blade, the blade I had in there was fresh, brand new, the razor's brand new, but it's a testament to the performance of the soap as well. Uh, the glide, uh, the post shave feel is just tremendous. And I already know what to expect with that splash when I apply it. And so when I do, I know what type of serenity I'm gonna be getting. And so give this a second just to set in. And we'll go from there. I think we might be okay. Face is in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the splash. That is some kind of wonderful. Terrific shave, awesome post shave. I went a little over what I thought I would do, but I was just really loving it. Folks, thank you for being here. Hope you're having a great week. God bless you guys, until next time.